name is Sahar Al Salani. I currently live in the country's only intentional multi faith community at the Stony Point Conference Center in New York. And I am right now um, assistant, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> currently, I am the national co chair of the Board of Fellowship of Reconciliation. Okay. So, um, Sahar, why did you go down to Charlottesville? Well, what intrigued me about the clergy call for Charlottesville in particular, I just remember when I was, when I heard about the first Muslim ban back in January, I just remember how numb I was, you know, and I'm, everybody who knows me knows that I'm, I'm a pretty tough, pretty tough cookie. But that particular day, I woke up and I heard the news and for probably the next week, this side of my body was numb. And all I could do was basically watch the news and spend a lot of time in my room curled up in the fetal position crying. Because as an organizer, there was nothing I could really do to fix this at the moment. You know, being an Iraqi American, I'm thinking about the refugees and, and just thinking about um, the students and the people that had nothing to do and the blatant, obnoxious racism of that van. And I just was breathless, you know, and I was exhausted emotionally and physically. And I just remember the texts that I started to get. I started to get uh, one text I got from uh, a gentleman that organized in Ferguson um, that I had met there. I got texts from some of the clergy that I had met in Standing Rock. I got texts from people that I had met in San Francisco when we had visited some of the internment camps when my children were preteens, I think. You know, there was a Muslim, every year there's a Muslim pilgrimage to Manzanar, one of the detention camps. And I was just looking online um, and I could see all of, you know, the interfaith social justice world is very incestuous, you know, in a, in a good way. I could see everybody organizing hey, we're in Boston, you know, rabbis are shutting down the bridge in Brooklyn. Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we're doing this. And I did not have to handle it. And I did not have to visit or shut down one airport. And that was a huge relief. And I think for a split second, I knew how they must have felt when we showed up for them. And never in my life did I ever think I would be in that kind of predicament. Like I said, I'm a pretty, <laughs> pretty tough cookie. <laughs> um, but I knew that's where I had to be. And so, um, yeah, there's no question on my mind. So I emailed, and then I got a call back, and I just set my mind to go. Okay. Um, so you sort of touched on it. Um, so what was the experience for you being the only Muslim woman as a part of the um, clergy delegation while you were down there? You know, it's kind of interesting because I, I had a feeling that there would not be a big Muslim turnout only because there are not a lot of Muslims within, embedded within the interfaith movement. Mm -hmm. Muslim organizations are so busy doing amazing work of their own, but it's really more in the civil rights of their own. They're combating Islamophobia, they're combating immigration issues, and they're so, they're so busy, uh, like occupied just with reactionary things to Islamophobia and to hate crimes. But it does not mean that they are not um, in touch with the intersection work, you know? But that's why people like me are involved in interfaith. I happen to live in an interfaith community. I'm so ingrained in it um, on a day-by-day -day basis. <clears throat> so I kind of figured I probably would be one of the few Muslims. And it was, it was actually an interesting thing because if I would have been a male Muslim, say an African-American Muslim, you know, with a kufi and a beard, um, I might have been treated differently. And it gives a different perspective to be a female Arab Muslim on the front line in a hijab and in a black abaya and it's a different it's a different look it's a different feel and I would have been treated much differently I think um, so it, I, I see a different perspective and a different lens um, but it was scary it does take chutzpah <clears throat> and I had to really rely on the more experienced clergy with me because um, I did feel vulnerable but at the same time I felt that since we are a part of the fabric and the tapestry of this country that I had to be there 
because we're one step away, you know, racism and Islamophobia and homophobia and everything that that we confronted there were all tied together.